Well, to discuss this further, I'm joined by Patrick Vernon, who's a member of the Oversight Group, who recommended that the Church of England established their fund. Patrick, thanks for your time on this, but break this down for us a bit further. Why was this investment fund initially set up? Well, the, the Church of England, or the Church Commissioners, who look after the, the money of the Church of England, made this announcement uh, over a year ago. They then put together an uh, oversight committee, about 15 of us, which I remember one of the members, and we realised that, that the £100 million, pounds, even though it was, it was a good start, it's not enough. Because if you look at the money generated that the Church of England made over those years, during the period of, of enslavement, it runs into billions. So we're, one of our recommendations is that, we, that uh, the Church of England should work towards uh, invest in a billion, but also work with other institutions and organisations who are involved in the trade at the same time. Because that's actually what I was going to ask you next. Do you think the setup of this fund could be a catalyst for other organisations to follow suit? Absolutely, and we've, that's why we've used this model of investment fund. And even though there will be plans to give grants as well, which is quite important, because we recognise that the investment fund is supporting business, uh, social enterprise, and also look at um, the wide issues of repair, such as uh, education, health and well-being as well. And this is quite significant um, for your viewers, because this, the Church England, as you know, was a major institution, along with many others, that, were, that had the involvement of Africa around uh, enslavement. And uh, we, uh, we hope and we anticipate other institutions and organisations in Britain will actually say, you know what, um, if the Church of England can do this, why can't we? I can imagine there are many discussions on how this money can be best channeled to the most deserving recipients. But I, I do then want to ask this, should this money go directly to people on the African continent, in the Caribbeans, who are affected by slavery? Yeah, I mean, in terms of our recommendations and implementation, we recognise that the, the sphere of influence and the trade involved Africa, that goes without saying, and obviously in the Caribbean and, and the Americas. Uh, and um, the plan is this investment fund is not just, just for the UK only, it's also going to be targeting definitely Africa uh, and the Caribbean to support in businesses. The next phase of the work is around implementation and this is where it requires dialogue. And we've made it very clear that this fund, the establishment of the fund and everything connected with the fund needs to have, a, have a, a co-produced, co-created to make sure that uh, ancestors of enslavement either in the diaspora, where, like I am in the West, in Britain, and those in Africa, or should play a key role in shaping and influencing. Okay. Patrick, just to take you up, uh, back a bit, where's the extra £900,000 coming from? You mean the extra £900 million? Uh, that money... 900 million, I beg your pardon, yes. Oh, don't worry about that, don't worry about that. Well, first thing, I'm hoping, this is my personal opinion, I'm hoping the Church of England will, in the next few years, uh, put more money of their resources towards this. But also there's opportunity, because there are a number of institutions right now in Britain who are also going through a similar journey and process in terms of what they should do, and they may want to be involved, work with Church England to make this a, a proper investment fund so we can really support and start repairing the harm uh, that has other impacts in Africa as well as people in the diaspora as well. Well, away from the fund, should the UK government and the royal family apologise for their part in the transatlantic slave trade? There's been an ongoing campaign uh, in Britain and also in the continent, as you know, for uh, the royal family, um, um, the government itself. Uh, so far, um, uh, under the last government, Labour government in 2006, Tony Blair made a statement of regret. Uh, King Charles made a similar statement of regret. Uh, but actually, what we want is more than that. I'm hoping that the very fact that the Church of England, uh, which is a key institution in Britain, has done this gesture, I hope that this will now put pressure and give further consideration for those institutions and those bodies who had direct benefit from African chattel enslavement to do the same thing.
Patrick Vernon, thank you so much for joining us on the program. He's a member of the Oversight Group.